Alright, in this video, I wanted to talk about one of my favorite Joe Bros in all of JoJo and how I feel about him. Because I know every time I ask someone about this character, it's either, oh, I didn't care for him, he was overrated, or, oh my god, I love this character so much. And where I stand on this, I love Kakyoin. <laughs> I think he is so cool. He's so awesome. Uh, I loved him in the manga. I loved him in the anime. Uh, I think sometimes the manga does a little better than the anime, but that's okay. The anime still goes hard because of that theme. That Kakyoin theme. Now, first, the first thing I usually hear when people talk about why they don't like Kakyoin is uh, he barely does anything. Now, one, uh, he, I guess compared to people like Jotaro, of course, he's not going to be doing as much as him. He's the main character. He's supposed to be the one to shine. He's the guy who's like doing the most out there BS. Just all I need is strength to win. Like Jiren over here, Jotaro type B. Now, it's like uh, whatever. You know, that's that's fine. That's fine. It's still cool to see Jotaro do his thing. But Kakyoin, I think, does a little spin on it. Now, Kakyoin, I think one Kakyoin's a strategist. He is a strategist, he uses techniques, and I love his design and look. He looks so clean. His his stand is so cool too. Hierophant Green, I love Hierophant Green. Hierophant Green does have weaknesses, obviously, but it does have strengths. And I think Kakyoin kind of like uses the strengths and kind of hides his weaknesses sometimes better than Jotaro. Because Jotaro just, whatever. He just does what he does. He's the main character. He... He, he's crazy, you know, but I still love you, Jotaro. But Kakyoin, I think Kakyoin won his design looks clean. And I love the part he builds in the Star Wars Crusaders. Um, I remember a YouTuber, uh, Caleb IA, that guy, he's a JoJo YouTuber. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you know about him, but uh, I watched his Kakyoin video and I was like, yo, this is facts. This is facts. Now, I'll leave a link to that video in this, the description. Because he really did an awesome job, man. I love that YouTuber. He's so cool. But, um, yeah. You know, I think he talked about Kakyoin really well in that video, too. He goes more into analysis about what he... He goes way more into analysis about me than me. He talks more about, like, hit the history and behind Kakyoin and what, like, inspired him and different things about that. But I remember he said that he's analyzed the tarot card or whatever and said that the tarot cards were, like, key points in JoJo and... Yeah, I remember they were really key points, but... And then uh, I read about it, and I was like, yeah, Kakyoin's tarot card is supposed to be, like, wise and mature. Or not mature, but wise. Someone you come to for advice. Um, and I couldn't agree with that even more. Out of all the JoJo, the JoJo characters on Star Wars Crusaders on that team, uh, if I were to go to any of them about just to talk about something, anything, like something mature... Someone mature, it would either have to be Kakyoin or maybe Avdol. But I feel like Avdol is a little like I can. I feel like I would can come to Kakyoin about anything. I feel like Avdol is more like you're like just your old relative who's just like you know there. Like yeah, you can't come to him about everything, but you can still go to him about some stuff. You know, <laughs> no disrespect to you, Mohabbat Avdol, but uh, Kakyoin now. Kakyoin one. I think he is fairly involved in a lot of stuff. Like, I'm not gonna say he's like, oh, he's everywhere all the time. Like, no, he's not involved in every fight. And yes, he had that period of time where he was out of the thing, just like Avdol was. He, he was out in the hospital against... I'm pretty sure he was there during the first Darby fight. But in the second Darby fight, he was there. You know, he was there in that second Darby fight. Uh, he was also there in the Jay Guile fight, too. He was there during the, the Greyfly fight. Uh, his fight with Polnareff... Yes, I guess that kind of wasn't Kakyoin, but, uh, I mean, not Polnareff, uh, Jotaro. I know that wasn't, yeah, that wasn't really Kakyoin, but I still thought Kakyoin was more of, like, a strategist more than anything. I think it was, like, a good break to take from, like, seeing Jotaro just, like, clap all these JoJo characters, just spread their cheeks and clap them every single fight he's in. And then with his, sometimes, I'm not gonna lie, he... Yeah, he sometimes uses strategies or techniques or something like that, but come on now. Come on now. Let, let's be honest. Jotaro is just like, I'm. He's the alpha male who just spreads your cheeks and claps him. Like, come on now. That's what Jotaro did in that part the whole time. Kakyoin, I think, was a good break from that. I don't, every time I saw him on the screen, I was like, 
this guy knows what he's doing. He has a plan. This guy uses his brain. Jotaro with the smooth brain over there. This guy, Kakuin, is using his brain and doesn't he because he doesn't have like an OP stand. And I'm just like, that's that's cool. That's what's intriguing about it. You know, I would rather watch like like say with like a superhero, I'd rather watch a superhero whose power has something that has some type of downside than just a superhero who just got everything. Now that's not saying the superhero who just got everything can't be really intriguing. Like Superman, he's got some really good comics too, like all star Superman stuff, but other people who like have some downside to their powers are also cool as well. Now Kakuin, I feel like he's not just OP. He's not just this OD character who's just like, yeah, you know, I'm here to clap some cheeks. I think he uses strategy and I think it was a nice break every so often because I think he was only in so many fights, like five or six. I remember he was in like a, in the older Darby fight. Yes, sometimes he loses. You know, sometimes he does lose. I'm not going to sit here and act like Kakuin wins every single time. And sometimes he doesn't even like do the winning thing like sometimes he's just there to help as well and I think that's fine that's fine it's not Kakuin's fight it's Jotaro's Jotaro's part you know it's his thing but still I think Kakuin being there helping at least doing something like like with uh the yellow not yellow temperance he was there for yellow temperance though he was there kind of he was kind of there with the the cherry thing you know, he was there. Like, he was there. But, yeah, like, the, the Dan of Steel or Steely Dan, whatever they called him. He, him, him. He helped. Now, he didn't do everything necessarily, but he did most of it. He really did most of that fight. He went into Joseph's head or whatever, and then he tried to... Dana Steel or Steely Dan tried to go into this other kid and even Jotaro and I feel like Jotaro has massive respect that of everyone on the team I think Jotaro has the most respect for Kakui now saying they're best friends that's a bit of a stretch I don't know if they're best friends like that but they definitely chill together more than any of the other card stars crusaders like with Jotaro I think he chose with Kakui a lot but ne needless to say like I think Kakui just because he doesn't do like the flashy, you know, he saved that little girl's life, he had a plan, he thinks more than just like brute strength, you know, he thinks more, I love that about Kaku, and I think he uses strategy, and even when he tries to use strategy and still loses, I still think that's like, that's fine, that's fine, he doesn't have to win every single time, I'm pretty sure he wins like four out of the six fights he has, like with the younger Darby. The younger Darby, he he lost, but I still think he somehow implored strategy in that video game thing or whatever. He still tried and put in strategy instead of just brute force like Jotaro where he just, oh, I'm just going to spread your cheeks, you know, just whatever, you know, who cares about that? I feel like Kakuin does more than just like brute strength. Yes, he doesn't win every fight. Yes, I guess he's not as flashy. That can be argued because the Emerald Splash does look extremely flashy, but I think sometimes you don't have to win to make an impact in the story or, or make just. It, I don't feel as though he doesn't have to win every single fight. He implores strategy every time he does try. Like with Greyfly, he was missing every Emerald Splash, but it all tied together because he had some type of more more plan. I thought. I think, I think when Jojo has more sh like strat strategic things with techniques than just, oh, I'm just going to brute force my way or just it's str I'm stronger so I win type stuff. I think that that is what I love about Jojo sometimes, when they actually use technique. Like in some Hamon fights, part two, they use techniques. I love this about Jojo when Kakuin uses techniques. Even when he loses, like in Dio, against Dio, he lost. He lost pretty bad, but he had some type of plan. He had some type of thing that he was using. I do love that. Even though he lost, he still tried. You don't have to win every single time. And Kakuin's personality, that is what a lot of people don't like. I feel like they're like, oh, he's bland. He, he's whack. Um, 
I just don't think that about him. I don't think he's bland or whack. Bland or whack is like, no, I just don't think that. I think that a lot of people who say this are the people who also hate on Jorno, where they're just like, ah, oh, I just didn't really care for him, or just, you know, whatever. I didn't think Kakuin was back whack because I thought he was intriguing, to, to me at least. I thought he was intriguing. I thought he was cool, he was chill, he was mature, he was wise. Somehow, he was more mature than most of the people in that group who were older than him. I thought that was so ironic and I thought that was so cool. You know, Kakui being the mature one. And I thought like, yeah, so and sometimes he is like chill, like sometimes he does show his childish side like with Polnar when they did the handshake or whatever, you know. I think Kakui, I'm not gonna sit here and act like he's a 4D character and just like, oh my goodness, this character is crazy, but like, I think people just downplay him so much because I I don't know why. Maybe they just didn't. They just expected so little from him, or maybe they just I mean expected so much from him that when he did not do everything in the part, he was just like oh whatever. Or maybe he didn't leave too much of an impact. Like maybe Caesar did. I see a lot of people talking about Caesar because of his death. He left a big impact. But I felt like Cockney did leave a big impact on me because. He just was he was like a breath of fresh air in part three i love part three but sometimes it drags okay it does drag like yes i love part three it's one of my it's probably my favorite part other than like part seven maybe part four but it drags sometimes sometimes the stand of the week thing where it's like these stands are not even interesting at all it drags okay it is not fun sometimes but i think kakuin was genuinely like a good break from like all brute force i think that was an amazing part he played on the team too where this guy was young but mature and wise you know i think and like caleb ia said in his video where he said kakun was like a good leader even though he wasn't the main character of the jojo bar i think he said something about like bucciarati was the same thing where like he's a good leader but he wasn't necessarily the great the, the main Jojo of that part. I think Kakuin filled that role too. You could argue uh, maybe Joseph, but I think Kakuin, yeah, I think Kakuin did do that role of leader, even though he wasn't the main character. I thought his supporting, his supporting role as a side character in a Joe bro, I thought he was awesome. He's definitely one of my favorite Joe bros and favorite characters in Jojo, he's one of them. Uh, but I thought he was awesome. You know, I thought he was really cool. And really quick, I just want to talk about the exact fights that he had too, as well. Let's talk about Kakuin's fights really quickly. Because one, he has some crazy fights. Now, Jotaro wins a lot of his fights from stupid means sometimes. You know, I'm not going to lie. Sometimes it's like, wow, he, he just won just because he won. Uh, that's not to say he wins every fight. Like, one fight that he didn't win, that Kakuin won, was Death 13. That fight was amazing. The older brother with Darby, even though Kakuin lost, he still was out there trying it. His his little video game thing that he did, that was awesome. Greyfly was awesome. Even when with against Jay Guile, he gave Polnareff advice and got Polnareff back into the game. I think Kakuin in fights is amazing. I think he is really cool and really good in fights. He does. He does implore strategy more than a lot of the other Crusaders. But that's going to be it for this video. I know I were like 10 more subscribers from 1K. So I'm really excited that we're so close to 1K. And if you see this video while we're already past 1K, thank you so much. I When I started YouTube, I didn't think I was even going to be getting close to 1K anywhere near this fast. I knew I was going to maybe get there one day with enough time, but... It just, it just seems so like, wow, like, uh, I, maybe 1K doesn't seem like cr crazy for some people. It's like, oh, it's like 1K, you know, I see YouTubers with a bunch, but I don't know. For me, this is just, it was just a milestone for me that we're really close to 1K. So I just want to thank you guys so much for getting us really close to 1K. But just tell me in the comments down below what you think about Kaku and where you stand, or if you're in the middle, neutral, you love him or you hate him. But that's going to be it for this video. Peace.